Welcome everyone. It's a great pleasure to be back at JAB and thank you so much uh, for attending. It's nice to see my colleagues uh, in the audience. And, uh, and of course, uh, a big thanks to the organizers, um, Robert and Alex and Brian putting together a great conference. I'm really enjoying myself. I hope you are too. Today I want to talk about uh, making search meaningful. That's the title. <coughs> And I say again, I think it'll be apparent why, why the title is Making Search <coughs> Meaningful again. So let's see if I can get there. Uh, before I start, I wanted to recognize our team. Um, my background is academic, and usually the first or last slide always looks something like this. Um, I, I don't see it as commonly at uh, these kind of meetings, so I wanted to kind of get back to that tradition. So uh, some of these people are here, um, and uh, I'm just going to recognize a couple of them. Yannick Gauthier, of course, you know most of them. He's in the back there. Hi, Yannick. So <clears throat> he's our uh, partner and, of course, the author of sh 404 Uh Hazar Cassis, some of you know, who does Agora. Uh, Jeff Channel, who I think you many of you know on... Uh, on Twitter, uh, <coughs> he's one of our main developers, a security expert, and an uh, all-around uh, badass programmer. We love Jeff. Uh, two of our support specialists are here, Tony and uh, Valley. Where are you? There you go. Thanks, guys. And uh, Simon, who's in Europe but couldn't be here, uh, who does our customer service. So everything you're going to see is, is a combined group team effort. Um, today's work is uh, primarily coded by uh, Jeff, and uh, <coughs> our support specialists, of course, do our uh, initial beta testing. So thanks, guys. Uh, back when I kind of started using uh, the internet, um, it was not much better than, than Usenet. So these news groups, does anyone here use Usenet back in the day, right in the old clients? So you remember browsing these kind of lists of messages uh, in a very inefficient way. Of course, no one does that anymore. Even Usenet is indexed and uh, does it, am I the only one who pays for Usenet ser uh, search service? Um, so we all use Google, of course, and uh, we're going to be talking about search today. And the two search terms you'll see a lot are Joomla, for obvious reasons, and Milwaukee. That's uh, where I live in Wisconsin, and we have a user group there. And there may be some screenshots from there, so if you're wondering why all the screenshots say Milwaukee, <laughs> that's why. Okay, so we obviously have an information overload. Obviously, everything, there's a ton of stuff on the web. Uh, my scientific background, uh, bioinformatics, obviously was huge. DNA sequences, protein sequences, for example, protein structures. Email, social media, obviously is huge. Text messaging, uh, and even desktops and phone. We see search expanding into all these areas. And the phone, of course, in the last two years has just exploded. Uh, and I thought this graph might be a little dated now. Uh, this is the number of iTunes purchases um, over time. And you can see that uh, you're getting like a billion purchases in 109 days. So there's just so much information, and how do we keep track of it? These are screenshots from my phone, and I have, uh, what, 929 songs and 4,000 photos, so just on the phone, of course. So how do you kind of sh go through that? Uh, does, I use search all the time on my phone. I actually very rarely click an icon directly. Um, and you can see I've just done a search here for Joomla. I come up with a couple of Joomstu MP3s uh, and a bunch of emails. Uh, of course, Brian's me, emailing me about security, as he usually does. So we are searching, but when we, when we search in Joomla, we all have a, a very different experience, right? So you all are, are web developers, so who has a search box on their site? Let's, let's get a good show of hands, right? All right, so who is using the core Joomla search for that search box? One, two, three, right? So we all know that, that there are limitations. Um, and so let's kind of review those a little bit. So the, what's that? Is that right? Um, if we look at the back end uh, for Joomla search, I've kind of got that in quotations there. It's not really a back end to the, the search uh, extension, right? You can disable uh, statistics and whether or not you want to show the, the created date. So there's not really much in terms, of way of fun in, in terms of functionality. And you all have seen these search plugins in the back end, and this is how you control what the extension searches for. And if you don't want to search for content, for, for in this case, you disable the plugin. There's essentially no, there's almost no functionality if you go in to edit these plugins, uh, except perhaps how many files to return. So there's uh, very little that you can do to modify it. On the front end, you see this, of course, very ugly search box uh, with all these crazy plugins at the bottom, how you want to order your content. Um, kind of the opposite of what, you, what I showed at the beginning, the Google search. 
Okay. What's important here is the plug-in order. I think you all know that the order that the search results are displayed is dependent on the order that these plugins are listed in the back end. Okay. So, um, oh, and that just shows, of course, the kind of basic filtering options uh, in the search. So. Com search that, that, that ships with Joomla is highly dependent on the search plugin order, which is not relevant to most end users. Um, the ordering that I displayed only works with articles, so you can't order the other types of content with those filters. And there's no context whatsoever. It's just a keyword hit, and that's it. So you have no, as an end user, there's no way for com search to tell what you actually might be interested in. So. As a developer, I find this very frustrating, but as an end user, if they see that, it's confusing and I think it kind of pushes people away and that's the last thing we want. We want to keep them and help them find what they want to find. So I'm going to tell you today about Advanced Search 3. This is a search extension that we've been working on for a while and in the beginning we simply did what a lot of people have done um, and that's take the search, pretty it up a little bit, maybe wrap it up in something in the back end and so you can see the front end search in the administrative area. Pretty basic stuff, really not much of a change. What we wanted to do was kind of change the paradigm. And we basically use the, of course, KISS principle. Keep it stupid, I can't keep it stupid. Uh, keep it simple and um, let the user get what he wants to find and make it meaningful, make the search results meaningful. So here's again what com search looks like. Uh, and just to do a, a quick showcase, this is what our search looks like, just from the without any, the default styling in, in the template. You can see that there are no plugins, there are no filters. All these things we can do with the code. We don't need to ask the user. By just, and all we have to do is a, a very few simple things. So on a test site, we have a bunch of uh, test articles. So this, the content here is kind of irrelevant, but you can see a, a quick search brings up, oh, here we go. A quick search brings up obviously a few hits, the words are highlighted, that's pretty typical. Uh, you notice that we've got rankings, how well these uh, search results compare to each other. So in this case, you might say, oh, well, this, there's two keywords here, maybe that's more important than this article that only has one keyword, for example. But that's exactly why, how these results are sorted, of course. You notice along the left-hand side, we've got some pretty typical quick filters past 24 hours, past week, past month, and you'll recognize that from Google, of course. Uh, and we've also got a, a few things that I think I'll come back to in a little bit, uh, save in advanced. Okay. So, our search results, uh, they, they have context. They go into, they, they look at the, your keyword, find out in what context it's being displayed in terms of H tags or titles, where it's, where it's occurring in your content, and they, and they give it a value based on what's surrounding it or where it, where it occurs. All these relevances are added up, and then the orders, the, the search results are displayed, you know, from highest to lowest rank. So it, it's completely independent of plug-in order. And this is just a little graphic. We try and take all the, comp, all the content that, that matches your keyword or keywords, smush it together, give everything a rank, and then spit it out to you in that order. So it's, uh, it's not rocket science, despite the picture of the rocket. We simply take uh, each of the keywords, they get a relevance of value add them all up, and then we remove or add uh, modifiers, and I'll explain what those are now. <clears throat> so here in the, this is a uh, screenshot from uh, one of the configuration screens, and you can see that we've made uh, it possible for you as an implementer or a developer to customize how much each piece of content gets weighted, or how much relevance it gets. So for example, if we go to the second item here, an H1 value, if your keyword is in an H1 tag, in this case, uh, is this example, we give it 10 points. If it's an H7, you would expect that uh, to be, of course, less important, so we give it one. So that's pretty obvious. If we have um, more than one occurrence, we give it a, another five or ten points, depending on how many times we find it. We've kind of arbitrarily said that once it's over three, we probably already know it's important, so we don't keep counting after that. Uh, if it's in the title, of course, you get uh, more points, you, uh, the, the, the relevance goes up. And again, all these are configurable. One thing we've done here, this plug-in penalty, this would be a, a negative modifier. If, you're, um, if, the piece of, if you have a keyword search that's in a content plugin, for example, say you're searching for the word position, that would, put, that would, uh, that would get a hit in a load position uh, content plugin uh, syntax. We, wanna, we, would don't, we don't want that to come back as a search result. So we can kind of give it a very strong negative so that people aren't getting you know, non-important information. Um, like other, uh, some other uh, search extensions that we have, um, we, 
We do uh, typo checking, and we use either Yahoo or Bing for that. Uh, maybe some of you know that Yahoo, uh, the Yahoo service um, that will do that uh, error checking uh, has a limit like 5,000 per domain or something per day. Bing is unlimited, but you need an API key. So we allow you in the configuration to, to either, by default, use the free Yahoo service. But if you have a busy site with a lot of uh, searches, for example, then you want to go, go with Bing and, and get their API key. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to go uh, through a short demo in the back, uh, back end a little bit and I'll try and get this down. Okay, so this isn't going to be... Uh, Oh, I just ruined my surprise. Um, all right, so basically I just want to show you a few screens. I don't want to bore you looking at uh, um, tons and tons of, of these types of uh, screens. So we're just going to go, um, not reasonably quickly, but we'll, you'll get a feel for what's happening here. You basically do a, a quick search, and of course you get the results that I showed you in the uh, screenshot. And I apologize, this is not my computer. My hard drive died on the plane, so I'm uh, improvising a little. All right. Really improvising, obviously. Okay, so we've got our search result. Uh, one item we have here is a uh, kind of like a lucky search on Google. If you click um, the lucky search here, what you're going to do is immediately open your first. Uh, your, your, your largest hit. So in this case, Milwaukee Summerfest, great concert by the way in the summer if you care to visit. Um, it's, it's, our, it's our highest ranking uh, search result. And if you hit search, of course, sorry, if you hit the favorites, it immediately opens uh, that article for you. Now, of course, there's very little content here. Um, this is just a quick little demo. Um, but we kind of added that in for people who probably know it are, people who are searching something for very, very specific, they, they can kind of skip this list. Uh, on the side here, uh, we pointed out these uh, quick filters. Uh, these are pretty straightforward. They do exactly what, what you want. If your content is, uh, has creation dates associated with it, then you can uh, sort it by, by these uh, quick filters. Uh, I should say that we, we wrote a new API into this extension so that um, not only does it support all the existing search plugins, uh, we're going to uh, collaborate with uh, other developers to just put a few lines of code in their existing plugin so that they can take advantage of um, these different uh, features like uh, date range and category, and I'll just show you that in a second. So that these plugins, they wouldn't need a new plugin, they could just make a small addition to their uh, current plugin, and it'll be compatible uh, with these advanced features, but also remain perfectly compatible with core search. If you click the advanced uh, button on the side, you can uh, do some of the things that you would normally do on the main Joomla search screen. So you can sort by um, uh, category here, okay? Or uh, the, this, is, this is an equivalent of your search plugin orders that we showed, that list of, of course, you all remember the search plugins. We've uh, built an area manager in the back end, and I can quickly show you that in a few moments, where you can combine your plugins. For example, I've put five of the seven search plugins into this area called Most, just as an example, and left web links and authors uh, as separate items. So if I wanted to narrow my search results, I could obviously choose that or choose uh, certain dates to, to narrow the content. Uh, the category and section search, of course, is, is is not available in Joomla search. And so, again, if you make small changes to the plugin, you can have your uh, extension example, uh, the categories in your extension listed here, and you can search just by those categories. So, the other um, item that I really like uh, and kind of has been, I, th I think when I first started with Mambo, people wanted to be notified. I, I remember reading on the forums that people wanted to be notified when there was new content published on the site. So that doesn't really uh, exist very easily uh, in Joomla. So what we've done is add a, a notify feature. And as soon as I log in, I'll be able to show it to you. Okay, hopefully I remember my password. Oh boy. Okay, so clicking that save link opens the, um, you save your, your existing search, and I can uh, 
and you see the searches that I've already saved here, Joomla, Milwaukee, Summer, and now you can set up your notification preferences. You can either disable notification altogether, if you like, you can subscribe to an RSS feed for these searches, or you can remove them altogether. Um, if you enable notify, what happens is that when uh, every time an article is saved or piece of content is saved, the system will send you out an email saying that new content matching your search results have been published. So for users on the site, they can follow uh, news even though they're not going to the site all the time, or they can do it more passively with an RSS feed. So this is a way for people to get um, more content to their inbox uh, in, a, in a quick way, in an irrelevant way, without having to be back on the site all the time. Okay. Yeah, these also, well, uh, sorry, I don't want to, I was going <coughs> to give you another surprise there, but I'll, I'll wait. Yes. I don't, please. And so is that triggered by Pondjob or by plugging the It's on save. Well, on the save. Right. Okay. So that's the, that's kind of the, the so search, on, on the front end, the, there's really not much to show you. You search and the results get ranked and displayed. Um, if, you, if you're interested, I'll be happy to show you uh, more about the algorithm. If you turn on debugging in global configuration, for example, uh, any search you do here, well, let's do something that'll find a result. Uh, if you turn on debugging, you can actually see how um, this five-star rating gets calculated. It's a numerical value, maybe it's 20, but you'll see every item, say an H1 tag or a multiple occurrence, it'll actually show you the breakdown. So if you want to configure um, your site to weight the, the relevance of each of these terms and where they occur, you can actually tweak it very carefully depending on what you think your users are doing or, or the interests of the people on your site. Okay, so I'll quickly uh, show you the back end. This is what the, uh, I'm worried I'm logged out here, so let me try and take care of that first. Yeah, okay. All right. Now again, I had to throw this local host together pretty quickly in the last day or so, so. Hopefully everything's in here. Uh, this is the dashboard. Uh, it's pretty standard. Uh, a couple of interesting things for, again, uh, troubleshooting for us, a uh, system log and that sort of thing. I won't really go into that. Um, we do track statistics, and we give you a graphical uh, interface here. Of course, it's not loading at the moment, uh, showing you the uh, top search terms and the top saved terms. So this is a really, um, a really great... Here we go, let's go to the statistics page. This is really great because you can see what people are searching for and how many times they've searched it. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the site with Milwaukee, that's my keyword, so you can see that it's uh, requested 125 times. Uh, and you can also see the uh, saved searches. So this gives you an idea of what people are looking for on your site and maybe going to help you tweak your uh, modifier values to get people to the content more quickly or maybe to target SE SEO better. I mean, there's lots of things you can do when you know how often people are searching uh, for different things. Okay, back to the dashboard. Um, uh, the other thing is, uh, I mentioned that some extensions have a back-end search, and most commonly you'll see the front-end search wrapped and displayed in the administrative area. So when, when I'm in the back-end and I want to find something, um, I, I don't want the front-end search, I, I want something more powerful. So what we've done is built in a, a raw SQL search, so this just searches everything in your database um, and, and gives you the result, and, and I'll give you a demo in a moment. It does raise security issues. You don't want, for instance, uh, password hashes coming back in search results, okay? So we have what we call backend scope, and you can go in, and this will basically show you all your tables in your database. And for example, uh, maybe I, I want to search categories and have categories show up in results. I can quickly add the title, name, alias, and maybe even the section, and when I enable these, these are now going to be available to be searched when I, in the back-end search. This is not front-end at all. This is a completely separate search area for the back-end only. Okay, you can see, for example, in content, I've got uh, the title, the alias, um, the intro text, and the full text, and a few other things. These are part of my search in the back-end, but these other ones uh, are the URL and the attributes. I don't need to make those searchable. Okay, and you can we've built in some nice tools for inverting the selection, that sort of thing. All right, so once you set your scope, so for, so for example, if, you're, if your site is built on K2, you don't want to search in the back-end content if you don't have any articles. So you could easily remove that. But so for instance, here's a quick, just a little example. It's our same search term. 
Okay, and so now this shows us all the results uh, of all our different tables. Uh, what I love about this is, uh, say there's a module um, that I need to edit, there's a search result here, I can simply immediately click the edit button and go right into uh, the module editor. So in the back end, I'm usually there because I want to change something, just finding it's not enough. I need to find it and then I want to do something, probably edit or unpublish, that sort of thing. So this quick back end search immediately takes me to where I want to go. For example, I know I, have, I know I have a contact named Jack somewhere. So I could browse to the component, load the contacts, find Jack, open it and edit it, or, don't fail me now, I could just search for Jack, comes right up, and I'm already editing my piece of content. So we built that really for, not really for finding things, but rather for um, uh, getting to things quickly. I had plugged it in earlier in a different place. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I, I apologize had... for interrupting you. You just said you were going to lose power at 30 to 20 or something like that. I wanted to make sure you had that. You didn't want to disrupt. You slide it down one? Yeah. Okay, so that's the back end search. We'll go back to our. Yes, sir. It does not do replace. Well, the idea. Well, I, I mean, that's a good question. So we can we can add. You know, we have a very agile uh, workflow on for develop, developing this right now. We're hoping to re release in a week or two. Adding something like that, um, I don't perceive as a problem. I guess my question to you would be: Is that something you would want to do? From here, a search and replace from this search interface. I might, uh, if you have a customer who uh, has 8,000 articles changing their name. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, there are there are some extensions that do that. Should we build that in? That's a good question. I'll, I'll discuss that with our guys. Um, this was designed to get there and edit it in whatever native. So if you have a K2 article, you just click it and you go to K2 and start editing. But uh, the, the replace is a is a good it's a good feature actually. <laughs> Uh, re replacer, uh, DB replacer, I think, by no number. That, that, that you can use for that also, but it would be a nice feature in here, you're right. Okay, so this is a really great, really great way to get at, at the content you want to obviously edit right away. There's also an, an ignore list because these words generally are not relevant, so that's not surprising. Uh, and you can customize this and add um, whichever ignore word you want. Uh, the modifiers I mentioned earlier, and I'll just go into the settings and show you uh, the default. This is, a, I gave you a screenshot of this earlier, showing all of the different values that you can customize, including the plugin penalty, the word and word penalty. We also have what we call an inflector penalty. So inflection is when you, uh, you have a word like berry, like a strawberry, uh, but someone types in strawberries, for example. So that strawberries will pull up the root word strawberry, but there'll be a penalty in the search results because it's not exact, okay? Um, you remember on the Joomla default screen, you have these options, right? All, exact, or phrase, right? We decided that we can actually not have the user even think about that. We can do this mathematically, and you can see those values, the modif modifiers are here. If all the keywords are present in the, in the search result, it gets a value of three, uh, an additional value of three. If it's an exact match, uh, five, um, or if all or exact uh, keywords are in the title, you can weight those accordingly, up or down, or you can put them at zero if you don't think that really has any meaning for your users. Now the other thing we thought was, um, say you have a photo gallery site, and uh, all the images are tagged, for example. If I'm searching for, uh, you know, pussycats or puppy dogs or something, uh, and, I, and my site is dedicated to uh, a photo gallery, I want those maybe, those results to be more highly weighted than articles or contacts that might also have those words or inflections of those words. So what we built in, in addition to the, the modifiers I just showed you, we built a, an actual um, modifier manager, if you will, and you can go into the modifier manager and either make a menu item, as in an item ID, or an extension, so for example, I might go in and uh, say, uh, front page slideshow. If there's a, if there's a search result, uh, that's, not, that's not a good search result for the front end. If there's a news feed, and my site's all about news feeds, I can make 
the news feeds uh, have an extra, any, any result that matches the keyword in the news feeds can have an extra 100 points here. I can just call it news or whatever. So in this way, they're not, they're not showing up on this page. In this way, you can have your site, your search results tuned to what your site's about. And you can do this, as I said, for any extension and for any item ID. And you can make as many or as little of these as you want. Okay, so that's, uh, those are the basic uh, features. I'm going to go back to Keynote here and uh, finish up. Of course, this is a great slide, and, uh, and we all take inspiration from, from Steve for our presentations. But what I didn't show you, I kind of hit it a little bit, uh, is this ability to search not only on your site, but maybe you have a set of sites. Or maybe you're on an internet and you have 100 departments or something. Okay? So we've built in a, a remote search feature into advanced search. And you can just, once you set it up properly, the search form has an option to also search on your external sites. And I've just got Joomla Milwaukee here as, a, uh, as an example. Um, okay, and the search results now come back. They can either use the relevant settings you s configured in advanced search on your, in the client you're using, or they can use the search results on the remote site, and you, you choose that option in the back end. So in this case, we're using all the, um, all the modifier uh, details from this current site, and it take, again, it takes all the search results, ranks them, and then resorts them. So you can see now when we search for Milwaukee, we get sites uh, that are remote, and this icon next to the title shows that it's a remote uh, search result. Uh, here's the ranking, of course, and if you click on this, it immediately takes you in a new window to that search result on the external site. Okay, so I'm pretty sure, I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the only search extension that does multi-site searching uh, at this stage. No one's correcting me? Okay. Is there any uh, option to display the fact that it's an external site? Uh, you can, uh, I believe you can uh, enable or disable that icon. Oh, okay. So uh, these, these have the same icon because they're both remote. This actually is a, um, it's an image from the category uh, events. Uh, this is coming up as a as a, as a res that's not an icon for for um, remote there. So yeah, I, I didn't highlight that, but if you have images in your articles, or if your categories or sections, uh, say in Incom content, have images associated with them, they'll be displayed here. First, they'll look for the first first they'll look for an image in the um, uh, parameters of the article. Then it'll look in for an image in the uh, body in the um, in the full text. Uh, and then it'll look for an image in the category or section. And so it'll kind of give you a thumbnail here on the search results. Will it find the, uh, will it search on the alt tag of the image? On the outside? Oh, on the alt tag. Alt, on the alt, alt tag? Uh, so if you, if, you're, if your plugin supports searching that, yes. Like K2, for example, I don't think searches tags right now. I don't think, I don't think that's built into that plugin. Is no, that what you mean? I mean sorry. Right. No, what this is doing is, if you're, it's, it's not searching that. It's not searching that. It's not searching that. But the image displayed is, is unrelated. It's, yeah, right. Do you have a question at the back? Um, can you enable the use special Right. Not yet. Uh, not. We can talk about it. <laughs> Come and show me exactly what you want to do. And I mean, we're really open right now because we're, we're kind of like we're, we're kind of ready to pounce. So one here and then over here. Yes. Right. I know what you mean. Um, Uh, so you can obviously click the advanced and do a second search, but uh, let me double check the, um, and I'm not, I didn't make this a part of the demo, let me just check the menu item here. And I'm wondering if we built in the, uh, I was wondering if we put the categories in the menu item, uh, but we should actually. I thought I was thinking that was here, so that when you make the menu item, you can have it restricted to certain uh, plugins, for example, or certain categories. So I, that's something that I would want to build in here, but we've not done it. Can you also get into like the context of where you are? So like, at the moment, I will use like JX Finder to create a, a module 
Right. right. And then search results that you get will be in that section. It still takes you out of the context, it takes the user right. out of the context of where the search is first, and then returns them back into it when they click the results. Right. I didn't show any, uh, any modules here, but our module does limit by, that, that's why I was thinking we had it here. In our module, you have the ability to limit the search of that module to a certain uh, plugin or category. So, but uh, when you click it, then you're, when you get the results, they will be filtered. So there's, there's not a way to do it in the menu item, but you can do it with the module. And when you get the results, do you do it to your main, your main menu assignment ID for the results? You would go to the main menu. What, the first, uh, it's going to try and guess the, the item ID of your menu item for this extension. That's right. Yes? Now, I have the same questions like we can demo that. Do, do, do you have several search modules with different search terms? Right, and we actually, uh, we, we had a bunch. Uh, so this extension, when we first did it, didn't have any, her, any of these features at all, Advanced Search 2, the existing one. So we, and, but we did have a bunch of modules um, that uh, made it a lot more flexible. We combined all those into one so you can different different module types. It's on the homepage of the search board that searches all of the sites. Right. If you go to a page with only more articles, you have a search board there that only searches inside the more articles. That's exactly right. So, I, I've not demoed that, but yes, that's, that's what we have in there. That should be in there, and it, but if it's not, it, it's it's a, it's an oversight because we had it. We had those modules built for the previous version, yeah. so I'll I'll double check that. I just made a note. Thank you. Right. Um, PDFs and other mm. If they're picked up by your search plugin. <laughs> right. Everything. I'm not releasing a framework, let me say that categorically. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But um, if I have a, say, a flexible content extension on CCK, yeah. and I want to build a plugin that builds into your system, absolutely. Well, it would work with whatever, like, so say you have K2. K2 has a search plugin that works with ours, but for example, uh, as written, it doesn't support the date range filters or the category, set, uh, category filters. We, we have a couple lines of code, and we're going to give them the photos, of course. Um, and that way, if you have advanced search, you get the extra features. If you don't, it behaves like it always behaves. So that's what we're going to do, and that was our point. Like we've done with sh 44 um, is to recruit other plugin, other extension developers that we can all work together and kind of, you know, it all, it all ends up being, uh, you know, helping each other out, right? So that we, we found that pretty successful. So that's the route we took with this. Yes? Right, so we have not done it for 1.6 yet, but it, when we, we're, as soon as we get this out, we're gonna, it's, very, um, it's written to be very quickly ported to 1.6, so it will be coming out, and of course it's going to respect um, ACL, like it respects the existing ACL, for example. So, uh, but the back end is where you have to be uh, a little careful because you've, you're actually doing raw searches of the SQL tables, so when you get the results, if there's ACL involved, then you need to filter and make sure the users are not having access to stuff that you don't want them to. So the back end's a bit of a different beast because you're assuming that people back there are administrators. The front end's a lot easier to control. The back end was written, it wasn't really written to, uh, for, it was written for system admins, you know what I mean? So, but uh, one six definitely, um, so, so we're expecting this to come out in a couple weeks and I would expect a couple weeks after that to have the one six ready. It, it searches the, like, like Joomla does, it'll search the, um, I, I think the current search actually searches the uh, database. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we had to build in a negative modifier for like content plugins, for example. Right. I haven't tested it. But you're right. I mean, you want you would want that content to come up. Yeah. Like if you include an article in another one. Yeah, actually, I've just downloaded your yeah. your extension to do just that because I didn't want to have four articles to edit, right? Yeah. That are kind of the, actually I have four articles created, but there's only one I have to edit, and they all obviously you're only updating one item. But, but you're in search, it would only see four uh, plugin tags in the, in the article. 
it would just see yeah yeah the the con the content syntax right uh, I'll make a note of that and uh, double check it because we definitely want that uh, to be processed so people get the relevant real results. I think the only way around it is to cache. So we built a cache into this uh, for performance because we don't index uh, everything and you can control how long you want to keep that cache around. Uh, so let me look into it and make sure that we can hopefully call the solution. Great. So um, session JK or JLS? Right, so they will, like JCal support it now, because we, right. obviously we do that. For events, the creation date is less important. Right, right, so we, we would write our plugin, um, you write your plugin, I guess, in, in the way that you want, but I, I never actually considered that so much as, because uh, we're kind of mo mostly fitting this up. No, I know what you mean, right. Um, no, I, I mean, it's important, right? You should be, I, I think in the plugin parameters, that would be something the user should choose. The, the the administrator, are you searching the creation date or the event date itself? I make a note of that. All right, good. Uh, I think I was finished in in keynote, but let me double check here. Oh, just it's a it's a JSON RPC, so you you can have it. Um, um, Authenticated or not, and of course you um, have to configure the the different uh, feeds uh, between the um, client and the server. So we, uh, just showing a couple screenshots that that was all built in, but really that's something you'll you kind of do if you need it. Um, I had a little bit of performance data, um, but this is it's about uh, 600 articles spread between com content and K2, and we just did a typical uh, J1.5 uh, site running on localhost, and uh, we saw a little. Um, a little bit of pain in the after initialized tests, but most of the uh, most of the other tests were pretty pretty comparable in terms of uh, performance. Uh, band searches in the red, core searches in the gray. So you can see maybe five to ten percent uh, penalty in the uncached uh, search. So for instance, either a new search on your site or if you've disabled caching. So with caching, of course, things speed up, but then there are other issues to deal with there. So I, I've not got any performance data uh, for that. Um, okay, so we, we just think we've got an a innovative uh, philosophy here. Take away all the decision making and, and make the search results uh, relevant. Okay, that's, that was our goal. Uh, we have a customizable engine which we think, we hope that developers like you are going to be really uh, excited to use and tailor to your uh, visitors and to your, to your exact website. Uh, the fast filters uh, that we discussed, uh, of course, and the advanced filters. Uh, I didn't show you the areas, but of course, say uh, maybe you have JCal Pro and J Events on a site. You might want both those plugins in an area called Events, so that someone, a user, doesn't have to even know what those are, but they know what an event is, of course. Uh, uh, a very, very powerful backend search, uh, ignore lists, um, typo correction, uh, visual statistics, which uh, failed in the demo. Apologies for that. Uh, notifications uh, I'm really excited about and of course the multi-site search and, and I think for anyone developing for I, I think especially for intranets for example um, that's, a, that's a really great feature um, that's all I had I'd be happy to take uh, any more of your questions uh, what options do you have to uh, scan the uh, output uh, well we don't we don't really put much on it I think we, we style the search button so it looks a little Better than the, than the you know the kind of default uh, styling, but we let you. Uh, there's some CSS that you can uh, edit or put it all in your um, template CSS, whatever you want. Is that what you mean? Yeah, styling? Yeah, well. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. It's all designed. Yep. So Absolutely. Can I integrate this uh, search into my component? Like, uh, like, like Project Focus is a very simple search function. Right. Let's say I would like to replace that with uh, your search engine. Right. That's a good question. Uh, I'm going to say yes, but I don't know for sure. Okay. But let me check. Can we talk about it after? I want to get some information from you, and we'll we'll go for it. But I mean, that that's an excellent idea. Uh, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to. Uh, but we've not actually gotten that far with it. It's still pretty fresh to us. So, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, there was an option to uh, also search the singular word for to search plural. Right. I bet you it is. Unless we're using uh, uh, Yahoo, for example. I'm going to make a note and figure, I'll get, I'll get you your answer, I'm not sure. Okay. 
Any other questions? All right, well, thank you so much.